and welcome back to my knitting journey. This is the knitting podcast, so I talk about all things knitting, what I'm knitting on, what I've just finished knitting and what new things I have got. And um, yeah, you're welcome to come on in and uh, enjoy the video. I'm Vanessa. I'm uh, currently in Luxembourg. I am sometimes in Berlin where I study and sometimes in Luxembourg where I'm from. And right now I'm in Luxembourg, as I told you last episode. And I know it's been a little bit longer between the last episode and this, but that's because I just didn't have anything new to show. Um, and I just didn't want to make like a repetitive episode where I show you the exact same thing without any progress and without any finished objects. Um, so yeah, that's why I had a little bit of a longer gap in between the episodes. I hope you don't mind. <laughs> and also I'm at my boyfriend's place right now and um, he lives in a basement apartment with all of the windows north facing and I hope the light will be okay. Um, it's, it's really hard to get like bright light in here or daylight in here so I yeah I did my best. I'm in the brightest spot there is and the cat is scratching on the door so I'm gonna let her out. <laughs> okay so <laughs> yeah he has two cats and they were in here with me and so because they always sleep on this bed um, and one of them just want to get out. <laughs> so as always I am going to start with my finished objects. I only have one today and a small one but I have something done um, and then I'm gonna show you what I'm working on right now and then I'm gonna show you some new things I have acquired since last time. So the first finished object I have got is this tank top. It is based on Jessie Maid's outline tank. Um, however, I, I knitted this before in the same yarn and I did do the open rich edges with the dropped stitches and somehow suddenly I instead of having one line open I had like three lines open in one spot and uh, I had to rip back the whole thing um, and I, then I decided to re-knit it with the same like measurements um, but without the edges, so without the dropped stitches. I just had, I added in this ripped detail on the underarms, like on the sides, to give it some kind of interest. And I made it in this um, striped teal and white pink speckled yarn. Uh, well, this, I'm going to insert some videos again of me wearing it. Um, I don't quite like the fit of it when I wear it just as a tank top. I think it looks kind of strange. Um, it, I know that I didn't use the right yarn for this. I knew this uh, starting it because I did use some Merino superwash and the pattern is made from more um, plant fiber based yarn and I knew that it's probably going to drape differently than the, the the pattern is supposed to. But it was all of the yarn that I had at that point, so um, I just used it. And I still think it's it turned out quite nice. Um, I like that it has this striped effect. And um, well, while I don't like it so much when wearing it as a tank top, I think it does look quite nice when I wear it more like a vest, so on top of something else. Um, for example, when I uh, wear it on, in, on top of a turtleneck or a shirt, um, I think it looks a lot better that way. And I'm also going to insert a video <laughs> of me wearing it in that way. Um, so I'm still gonna get some use out of this. However, I have some more of this yarn and I wanted to make like a matching pair of shorts to go with this but I'm not gonna make that right now because I know that that pattern that I had in mind 
also uses plant fibers so I don't want to make the same mistake and use the Merino superwash wool um, and it's not gonna look the way it's supposed to in the end. So I have one skein of this exact same yarn and one skein of um, just like the green part uh, so it's a almost um, solid color the second skein and I think I'm gonna use the two skeins for something else uh, and not the short that I wanted to make. <laughs> yeah that was my first and only FO. Oh I can also show you this. I showed it to you before I think. It's a sweater that my mother made uh, for me and I asked her and she says she used patent stitch. All of her patterns are in German or French so I don't I have to look up what it translates to and if it's called the same in English but yeah it's this super chunky very soft and cozy sweater made out of merino yarn and yeah I love wearing it but it's super hot. <laughs> Now my first whip is a little bit hard to show right now because I have this weird habit of having my right side on the inside of <laughs> my um, knits when I knit in the round and my wrong side on the outside so it's always when I have all of the needles on the arms it's hard to, to show. I'm going to try anyway. This is my Shimo sweater. Um, I was already knitting on this last time. And it's a lace front. It has this lace panel in the front and uh, it's a raglan construction. And I finished all of the body. Um, yeah. I finished all of the body and I almost finished one arm. I am uh, doing um, a, what do you call it? Tubular, ca tubular cast off. It's my first time doing one. And uh, right when I got to casting off, I noticed that I forgot my darning needles in Berlin. So I have to borrow some from my mother. <laughs> Um, but I haven't been at her place uh, since I noticed that I'm I'm missing the needle and yeah so it has this lace front and a long a ripped border at the bottom and then for the arms it has this the repeat um, of the pattern on the front um, on the arm it's I think it's three times uh, repeated around the arm and then it has a pretty long cuff it, I think it gives also the option to have like a three quarter, quarter length a sweater instead of a full length sweater and um, I made a full length just because I usually don't wear any quarter length sweaters <laughs> and I don't I'm not only learning how to do lace and um, a tubular cast off with this sweater but I'm also learning how to do twisted pearl stitches so I've learned quite a lot with this sweater and last time I was a bit frustrated because um, the cat is at the door again so I'm gonna let her in again <laughs> I hope this is not going to continue all of the time. <laughs> um, what was I saying? Oh yeah, I was a little bit frustrated with um, this sweater last time because I noticed that I was doing all of my uh, knit to pearl yarn overs wrong on the lace panel and I didn't notice that until like the fourth repeat. And yeah, a lot of people said in the comments to um, just keep going on the way I have done them until that point. So um, as to have the pattern the same all of the all of the way, but I decided to still do like the right pattern pattern on the bottom and do the yarn overs 
how they are supposed to be done uh, just because I wanted to learn it and because I just wanted to have it right at least once in the sweater and it still isn't very noticeable when I tried the, the body on um, you didn't really see a big difference between like the top few repeats and the bottom ones um, this should be finished next time oh and it's done in knitting for olive merino yarn and knitting for olive soft silk mohair the merino I always have all of the like details about the yarns and the patterns in the description down below so if, so if you're curious what color I use, what yarn I used, if I don't say it in the video it's always in the description. <laughs> Next up is the Celtic Myths shawl that I'm knitting for my mother. Um, I showed it to you last time I think but then I only had like this part or something um, and yeah I've been knitting quite a lot on this and I'm quite happy with how this is turning out. I really like the colors. I think she's gonna love the colors. Uh, these are totally her thing, like pink and purples. Um, and I like that it's making this slightly striped effect, but without being too harsh. Um, I think it's it just looks nice. <laughs> And I actually had to, like, just this morning, I had to uh, reinsert this skein. I'm still on the first skein, but when I got into the living room this morning, my poor yarn was lying on the ground, all torn up. And it was actually broken in two and completely chewed up because one of the cats attacked my yarn. Thankfully, they didn't attack the, the shawl, they only attacked the yarn. Um, it looked like a massacre. <laughs> and I now have to weave in more ends than I usually should have. <laughs> um, yeah, so this is the body of the shawl. It will be, at the end, I think it will be almost double the length as it is now. Um, and then there's a cabled border that's added in um, on the bottom where you pick up like the stitches that you cast off from the body of the shawl. And I'm really excited to get to that point because I'm I really want to see the way the the yarn um, looks in that pattern because now it's making these uh, it's the stripes are getting thinner and thinner and on the border it's going to stay like the same width all of the time and I think it's gonna look yeah it's gonna look quite nice because to the end of the body of the shawl the yarn is gonna get stripes are gonna get thinner and it's gonna get more models and then you have like the brim where you have these more crisp um, gradients again I think that's that's gonna look nice <laughs> or at least I hope so <laughs> and I'm using the Gomitolo Duo yarn by Lana Grossa um, it's a bamboo and um, yeah it's a bamboo virgin wool and polyamide mix um, so it's not too hot I think and it's gonna be nice to just drape around your shoulders in the summer and last time I also showed you the starter sweater but yeah it looks like this again <laughs> um, I tore it apart because I didn't like the way it was turning out I just didn't like the placement of the stripes so I took it apart because I wasn't even done with the yoke yet um, and now it's two balls of yarns again <laughs> and for the uh, brushed alpaca I just took it apart the, the two strands together because I had a double and I just really didn't want to pick apart the two strands again because they are already really into each other <laughs> um, so yeah that's probably 
I'm going to start that as soon as I have finished my Shimo sweater. Um, so that should be on my needles again next time. However, I also want to participate in Kriabia's um, knit along. She is hosting a cone along with Woolly Knit. And if you've seen any of my videos before, you know that I really like their yarn as well. And that I just finished knitting a sweater with their yarn. And I really want to participate in this um, knit along because I have a lot of their yarn at home. Um, I just, I'm not sure what to make. So if you don't know, it's a little long where you should knit from either a cone or one of Woolly Knits hanks. Um, so they have their, they, their 200 gram hanks. Um, they're about like 900 meters on there or there are 500 gram cones. I think they also have smaller cones, but I have one with 500 grams. And uh, yeah, you're just supposed to knit with one of these. I think you can also use a cone from whatever other brand, um, but the hangs is only from Woolly Knit. So I either want to make Fiber Tails Scott Maker, I don't know if that's how you say that, sweater uh, in the colorway Green Fields. Or maybe Fable Knit Bear's uh, Borough Cardigan in either the color cinnamon or um, what was the other NASA Ref Brown. Um, I can't decide. I don't know. I'm going to make some swatches and uh, maybe you can leave me a comment down below where you say what you would prefer to see or what you think would look nice of these things. Um, I'm kind of gravitating towards the, um, the burrow cardigan in the cinnamon colorway because I think I'm going to get a lot of use out of it and it's actually, I actually have a cone um, so it would be more fitting for the knit along. You're going to see next time what I decided on um, but really leave me a comment down below. I'm always happy to hear other people's opinions. So for new things I only have this well, only it wasn't, um, it was quite expensive. So I think that's enough. Um, if you've seen any of my other videos, you know that I am trying not to buy any more yarn right now um, because I'm saving up to do like a Berlin yarn store tour when I'm finished with university. And I also, I'm probably going to travel through Denmark in the summer when COVID is a bit calmer and um, there I want to go so to some factory stores and splurge on some yarn <laughs> but for that I have to save up so I don't want to make any impulse buys if I still have some stuff in my stash um, yeah I'm just saving them <laughs> but one thing I bought is this needle set. It's from a Prem. It's compatible with Knit Pro, and it ranges from uh, four millimeters to ten millimeters. And it's in this dark wood. I really like this dark wood. I think it's super pretty. And it also came with uh, some cables and stoppers, and yeah, in different lengths. And um, yeah, it's in this pouch. It's not the nicest pouch, but it will do. And I'm super happy to use this. I actually haven't gotten around to use this yet because I already had um, these projects on needles. But for the starter sweater, I am uh, I will have to use this because I left my other needles in Berlin. I'm just excited to finally have a nice set of needles and I'm going to update you how they are to work with and uh, what my thoughts are on them as soon as I've used them. Yeah, so for next episode, I think I will, I should be in Luxembourg. Um, I don't think I will be back yet uh, because I really have quite a lot of things I have to take care of here, um, like doctor's appointments and um, other things. <laughs> and I have also, been really enjoying 
being able to spend some time with my, my family and my boyfriend and my friends uh, because I haven't gotten around to do that a lot in the past half year. But I'm also already feeling like the bachelor stress because I'm, I've started to do my research and everything and working on, on my bachelor's, um, yeah, my bachelor project and it's, it's a lot of work and it's kind of weighing hard on my shoulders right now and I hope I can manage to find some time off during that time to relax and to knit a little because it's it's something that's very meditative to me and it calms me down a lot um yeah and as you can see I reached my goal of only having two knits at a time however shame on me I left my scarf in Berlin I didn't bring it and I didn't finish it so as soon as I'm in Berlin I'm gonna pick it up again and I'm gonna continue knitting it because I don't want it to become something that I never finish um, yeah but maybe some of you noticed that I didn't have it with me today <laughs> um, yeah you can shame me down in the comments and I hope I will get a little bit more knitting done in the next two weeks um, so I have a little bit more to show in the next episode and also some new things that you haven't seen before. Um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed watching this and um, this is my Instagram handle if you want to see a little bit more of me. You can also follow me or hit the bell so you are notified next time that I upload an episode. And yeah, I just hope you enjoyed it and I'm always happy to see people comment and that people will actually watch this. See you next time and happy knitting. Bye! Oh, and as a little bonus, I thought if she already interrupted us so rudely, I should at least show you this little monster. Oh, come here. This is Masha. <laughs> and she can be quite annoying. But she's a cute and fluffy cat. I always think she looks a little bit like a Norwegian <laughs> forest cat, but she isn't. She's just like a street cat. Um, yeah, she's the sweetest. Oh, and she hates me right now. <laughs> Do you hate me? Yeah, you hate me. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Bye. <laughs>